Shalom and good evening. I'm Amir Tsarfati and I'm here from Connect here in Galilee. And this is our round table. And before I bring back with me around the table uh, my good friends from the United States, I would like to give you, uh, uh, first of all, a quick update. Israel is engaged in a very, very difficult war, not just in uh, Gaza with Hamas, but also officially with Hezbollah in Lebanon. And we're up for a massive strike on Iran. And uh, we know we have some good days and some bad days, and but but what is clear is that if we, by invading into southern Lebanon, we have uncovered a uh, probably diabolic plan to invade into Galilee and to do to the northern part of Israel something even worse than uh, October 7th of 2023. Thankfully, this has been um, foiled and Israel is now finding tunnels and rockets and maps and uh, unbelievable things every day and we thank God for that. And uh, also, we're bracing for a major strike on Iran. So, guys, a lot is happening. And because of that, Hezbollah is shooting rockets daily at our very location. So I just want you to know, if something happens, and I will have to go and find shelter, um, my three very distinguished guests uh, will be carrying on the program while I'm gone until it's okay to come out of the bomb shelter and I'll be back here. So let me invite Pastor Barry Stagner, Jen Markel, and Steve Yon to this round table. Um, uh, let me see you guys. There you are. Good to see you, Jan, Barry, and Steve. Um, how, is, how is everything there on the U.S. side? You're up for your own adventure in a few weeks. <laughs> yeah, that we are. <laughs> yeah. Things are quite exciting around here as well, not anything like what you're experiencing, but we are living in a very divided country. Yes. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. more than ever before. Definitely a different kind of war zone. True. Yeah. More than ever before, yeah. your yeah. elections yeah matters to us also, as you know. Um, and so we will definitely look very closely at what's going on there. Uh, Jen, would you do us the honor and open with a prayer and we'll dive right into this very important topic, why the rapture matters. Be happy to. Heavenly Father, just remind everyone, Lord, that they have been born for such a time as this, difficult as it is. <clears throat> to get the gospel out, to spread the good news. And, and Lord, <clears throat> keep us hopeful. Keep us focused on things that do bring hope, the blessed hope and other things that the Bible promises us as believers. And we thank you for gathering us together for this hour, and we pray that it would be an encouragement to everyone. And we ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Mm. Amen. 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 So again, shalom everyone. I'm Amir Tsarfati. I'm in Galilee in Israel. Steve Yon, you are in Denver, Colorado. Is that right? Parker. Denver, yeah. That's right. Yep. Down in Parker, yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Barry, yeah. you're from? Orange County, California. Orange County, California. And Jan, the Frozen Chosen. And you're from? Frozen Chosen, Minneapolis. <laughs> Minneapolis. Well... <laughs> Uh, we hope that your former governor will not be uh, the vice president, uh, but... Uh, uh, we just don't want him back. We just want yeah. him to go away. Yeah, but, yeah, but keep him somewhere else uh, outside of D.C. I, uh, that would absolutely. be better for everyone. Anyway, guys, uh, what, uh, what I want to do before we start asking the, top, the question, why the rapture matters, uh, Pastor Barry, did you mind explaining to people, there's a lot of people that joined our, our channel, uh, people that have been following us not for too long, um, they may have heard the term rapture, but they're not quite sure what it's all about, simply because someone told them it's not in the Bible. 
So can you give us in a nutshell, what is the rapture all about? What is it? Well, the rapture basically, as uh, you'll find in, in uh, Paul's letter to the church of Thessaloniki, the phrase caught up, uh, the Greek term is harpanzo. It means to snatch away by force. And by definition, I think what we're looking at is a supernatural translation of living human beings on earth into the eternal realm in heaven. And it happens, as Paul described in 1 Corinthians 15, in the twinkling of an eye. So, you know, I think it's just us bypassing death or one generation bypassing death and being taken into the presence of God uh, immediately and uh, forever to be with the Lord. So it's uh, the catching away is what the Bible describes it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jan, so the rapture matters more for the living or also for the dead? Well, as a matter of fact, it matters for both. Um, but I think it matters right now because we're living, let's be honest, we're living in some very, very dark times. We need hope. The Bible calls this the blessed hope. So I think the thing that grieves all of us the most, and one of the reasons, Amir, I, mean, I even suggested this might be a good topic, churches are silent, and so they're not giving the hope, and it's kind of programs like this that are kind of, we have to end up doing it, which is fine, but the thing, point is, people go to church for encouragement. They go to church to be told, I mean, what, does the future hold? And then to leave something like this out is just beyond tragic. But mm. this is what's been happening you know, for a lot of years. Mm. Steve, uh, from what I gather, quite a few Christians are uh, opposing the teaching of the rapture of the church simply because they think it's a new theology that emerged only in the last 150, 200 years, and thus it's not for us to really uh, delve into. So, I mean, is it new? Yeah, yeah tell that to Paul. You know, <laughs> even back with the, with the, with the Thessalonians, he's, he's, he's giving them that hope. He said, you, you, may, you may have heard that, that, that there is no hope for those who who have uh, have died, and and uh, in the same way, there's no hope for us, but there is that hope, and and there's that that moment when we will be caught up to be with the Lord, and 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 He says, comfort one another with that exactly. with that hope, and I can think of and as we look around the the world uh, today, I can think of of nothing more depressing than the idea that we are just going to have to endure whatever yeah. comes because it's not going to get better that there's for, for those who think that there's going to be this moment where everything is going to become very nice and lovely again and and somehow the millennial kingdom will be ushered in by the church uh, that's 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 a pipe dream that's not scriptural it's going to get worse until the lord comes back and he's the one, he's the only one who can make this better. Mm. Right. So, uh, Jan, do you have anything to add? Well, I, I think that we ought to be considering that the reason a lot of churches and denominations aren't handling this is they don't handle Israel well at all. And the rapture, and it, look, the tribulation is for Israel, not the believers. That's why we're removed, is it's not for believers. The tribulation is for Israel to bring Israel to faith and is to bring the unbelieving world to judgment or to faith. But if a denomination believes Israel is irrelevant, then the fact that that's why they won't even deal with the subject of the of the tribulation, the Daniel 70th week, the time of Jacob's trial. They don't care about Jacob. That's the bottom line. They don't care about Jacob. So that this whole topic is left off the table. Amillennialism, preterist theology, replacement theology. And that's another topic, but again, it's that's why it's so important for those of us who do believe in it to talk about it. I see, uh, Pastor Barry. So, um, so 
we understand that the rapture comes from rapturo in the, in the Latin, which comes from harpazo in the Greek, which means to be snatched away. This is what we are all waiting for, that Jesus will meet us in the cloud. We're going to be snatched all the way up to see him, and he will take us to where he has uh, prepared a place for us. And uh, we're going to spend the time uh, with him. Uh, the question is, how long of a time are we going to spend there? And this is another uh, uh, topic that Christians are divided on. And that is, if we believe in the rapture, then we don't necessarily agree on the timing of the rapture. So give us quickly a synopsis of the three main, apart from those who don't believe in it. Let's talk about those who do believe in it. What are the three main uh, 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 options and why is it uh, that uh, you believe in what you, in what you believe, basically. Well, Amir, first of all, as far as the numbers go, let me just mention this real quick. Uh, according to Quora.com, there's 2.42 billion Christians in the world. And according to that same uh, data gathering group, 6.6% .6 of the 2.42 billion believe in the rapture of the church. That's 159 million out of um, 2.42 billion. And this parallels, I think, what Jesus said, that he's coming at a time when he's not expected. And the expectancy, mm -hmm. even in the church, is, is low, which I believe means we ought to be expecting him, uh, because yeah. it seems like the vast majority of the church is not. The three main positions on the rapture of the church are the pre-tribulation uh, position of the rapture, the mid-trib, uh, the, well, there's actually four, the, the pre-wrath, and also the post-trib uh, rapture of the church, which, uh, again, I don't know that that fourth one makes any sense at all. Uh, why would we be raptured only to come immediately back uh, after having endured the whole of the tribulation? But I think the pre-tribulation rapture makes sense, as Jan alluded to. Uh, there are 70 heptads, 77-year periods that are determined, and that means to mark out or carve out for Daniel's people in the holy city. So the tribulation is regarding Daniel's people, the Jews, and the holy city, Jerusalem. You see these parallels in Zechariah chapter 12 through 14. But I think one thing that we have to remember is that Paul was talking about, as Steve mentioned, uh, the, this translation into the eternal realm. And he said, he prefaced his statements by, we shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. Well, how do you uh, have and experience that instantaneous change into immortal incorruptibility? if there's no rapture of the church. And what's he mean by we shall not all die? So once again, I think because 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 says we're not appointed to wrath, which the 70th week of Daniel is wrath from start to finish, uh, we can't be here for any of it. So again, uh, uh, for those who hold to the pre-wrath position, believing that God's wrath is the second half of the tribulation, uh, that requires a bit of eisegesis. You have to force something into the text that isn't present there. Uh, because the tribulation starts according to Second Thessalonians 2 and Revelation chapter 6, when the man with a covenant in hand rides onto the world scene on a white horse like a good guy. So again, if you're going to say pre-wrath, I would agree with that if you believe the whole tribulation is God's wrath. Uh, the mm. mid-trib point, again, uh, implies something that's not present in Scripture. Mm. And I think the pre-tribulation rapture is biblically defensible as a matter of fact, I believe it's it's necessary for the integrity of Scripture uh, yeah. for us to believe in a pre-tribulation mm -hmm. rapture. Mm -hmm. I, I could tell you also from from a Hebrew speaking perspective, um, the use of the word wrath uh, has been hijacked by people who don't speak Hebrew to establish mm -hmm. a theory that doesn't hold water if you do speak Hebrew, because the word mm -hmm. wrath in Hebrew is za'am. And that's the same word that is translated in English to indignation in some mm -hmm. other translations. And the book of Daniel in chapter 8 speaks very clearly about the events that are in the latter part of the indignation, which means uh, everything that everybody talks about the second part of the tribulation 
is considered by Daniel as the latter part of the wrath, which means the entire thing is the wrath of God. It's just that the wrath of God, which is the tribulation, has two parts. But if we are exempt from the wrath of God, we're not just exempt from uh, the first, uh, you know, uh, the last three and a half years. We're exempt from the whole thing simply because we're not destined to the wrath of God uh, as well. And, I, and the other thing that, in my opinion, is super, super important is we all know that really no one knows the day and the hour of the rapture. And I think that the only option where you can actually stay true to not knowing the day and the hour is if it happens before. And it's simply yes. because the tribulation is one of the most described event as far as yes. days, weeks, months, and years. We know exactly how long it's going to take. So if you, if you talk about the Middle East, we know exactly when. If you talk about exactly the very end, you know exactly when. The only time that can surprise uh, the world is uh, before it starts. Because once it starts, that's it. Uh, Steve, what is the beginning of the tribulation? As far as the Bible is concerned, who has to rise in order to mark the beginning of the tribulation? Well, that's the the rise of the the Antichrist. There's uh, um, Israel will be at a place where they are they are ready, they are ready for someone because something is going to happen to the U.S. Whether it's because of the rapture and and the whole U.S. economy and infrastructure just collapses, uh, because I think the U.S. is probably the one country more than any other that's going to be affected by the rapture. Um, there's going to be a collapse here, which leaves Israel on its own. And that's an opportune time for that Ezekiel 38 war to start. Now, I, again, I, I, from scripture, I can't point to whether it's before or after the rapture. I'm just talking logically in my mind. It makes sense that, that once the U S collapses, then Israel is fair game. And that's when Russia uh, will see, hey, now's our time to get uh, to get the oil or, or to get the gas. Turkey will see, hey, here's our time to show that we are the the you know the, the, the leaders of the new caliphate. And Iran will see, here's our chance to finally get revenge. Um, so there will be that that massive attack that will be thwarted. And then along comes this man of peace mm. who says, okay, guys, let's bring it all down a notch. This has been mm. crazy for too long. Let's just work out a deal and let's get a temple back up and we will start something new. And as you know, uh, Amir, with all the war that's going on right now in Israel, if someone comes along right now and says, yeah. I can broker a peace deal that's going to have everyone happy, everyone safe, everyone comfortable. What's going to happen there? Mm. I mean, everyone's going to jump at it and say, finally, yeah. we can breathe again. We don't have to worry like you do driving from Connect back home. You don't have to drive yeah. in certain lanes so that you can pull to the side of the road if need be and get out of your car and lay down next to your car because rockets are coming in. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree with you. I just think that if he comes and suggests that there should be a Jewish temple on the Temple Mount, today is not the right day for him to do it. Uh, <laughs> no, but, uh, <laughs> probably, probably right after Ezekiel's war, when all the radicals will be out, yeah. and then that, right. that, that yeah. might work better. Right. Jan, uh, can, I, can I just I say a word? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say a word. Yeah, of course. Go ahead. About because both you, Amir, <clears throat> and Barry have given messages, and I'm just backing up a little bit. You've given messages both, and they're very impactful on just what is this wrath? What is the wrath of the tribulation? Is this, okay, is this something, you know, that we see every day? My goodness, no, I don't think we can quite comprehend what this coming wrath, again, that we escape is all about that's coming upon the world. I mean, we can look here to the southeast section of America and see some destruction. And that's probably going to be all over the world. But mm. this is what the Lord has delivered the believer from 
but we want to rescue others so they don't have to go through it. Yeah. That's the only reason we're talking about it. Yeah. We're not talking about it to be fearful or to scare anybody, but we yeah. want everyone to rescue people from having to go through that. Yeah. I think that, uh, Barry, having, having taught the, the book of Revelation together with you in many yes. different parts of the world, I think it, it really helped us also, uh, I guess, deliver the severity of yes. uh, the tribulation yes. and uh, to make people understand that. But uh, Barry, and I, I, I know Jan, I also want to ask you about it because in one of your conferences a few years ago, you actually used a very strong language on, on how diabolic it is to uh, suppress the teaching of the pre-tribulation rapture. And you, you took some fire uh, from, uh, for, for saying that, I remember. Uh, but um, I, I wonder what the three of you have to say. Why is it that there is such an opposition that can turn so ugly, so ugly, exactly. brothers and sisters in the Lord that can turn so vicious and angry when we teach about the pre tribulation rapture of the church, the blessed hope of the church. Uh, Barry, uh, isn't it because you are just an escapist? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so, we're told I mean, that, you know, we're going to escape the things that are coming upon the whole world. And, you know, Amir, as you mentioned a moment ago in teaching through Revelation so many times, I think what uh, Jam was pointing to a moment ago is the catalyst for that. And, you know, the question uh, that comes up in my mind is why did God want us to know so much about a time we're not going to be present for? And I think that is to give us a burden for the lost and perishing who are yeah. going to face that time. And, you know, in Revelation 3.10, the Church of Philadelphia uh, is told that they're going to escape the things that are coming upon uh, the whole of the world. And uh, so there's a promise there that's quite clear. And, you know, we often get that accusation and that finger wagging at, at the pre-tribulation rapture believers. And that's all we care about is escaping. Well, that's not all we care about. And we care about the loss. We care about the perishing. And as, as Jan was mentioning, we want people to be able to avoid this moment in time and go in the twinkling of an eye experience. And, yes. you know, just watching these things happen that we're watching happen in Israel right now tells us uh, the hour is late. Uh, the yep. night is far spent. The day is at hand. Mm. And we need to be rescuing those yeah. drawn towards death. So I'll ask you the same. And then, Steve, uh, Jan, why are you under so much attack when it comes to the teaching of the pre-tribulation rapture? And mostly from believers. Uh, it's not oh, even, yes. even non-Christians that even criticize you about this. It's actually people who profess to be born-again, spirit-filled Christians. So mm -hmm. What's the story? Well, I think all of us have experienced this. And, and I think those of us who feature the truth of the pre-tribulation rapture of the believers, um, and if it's prominent in our teachings, which for certainly... I think all of us, it's, it is. This is to be expected. This comes with the territory. But, Amir, it's almost at a demonic level, and I'm not calling any believer no. demonic, but I'm calling their intensity that they come against us almost demonic. And I think the devil is stirring people up to believe a lie of another timing of the rapture. Again, that robs the blessed hope. Again, that makes us look for the Antichrist instead of Jesus Christ. Really? You guys want to do that? A lot of people seem to want yeah. to do that. They even start naming the Antichrist. Anyway, yeah. you, all of us are focusing on the hope, the blessed hope. But I promise anybody who's outspoken about this, they're going to get shot at. And that's putting it mildly. Um, I, I have no words for how mild it is. It's awful. Yeah. And by the way, uh, uh, from traveling around the world, I've noticed yeah. some some people uh, hold on to the mid trip or post trip because they want mm -hmm. to they want the honor of hosting the Jews that are fleeing, uh, and they want the honor. Of, God chose them to be those who take care of Israel. I mean, it's it's it it goes that far. 
And I've seen it uh, even when I travel to the Philippines. People, uh, I mean, there's some islands where they 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 purchase uh, you know land and they purchase uh, uh, food. Also, the Christians there will take care of Israel during the tribute. It's amazing. So, so when you have this thing in your mind that that's your life mission, of course, pre-trib won't make sense to you because then you're not going to be here to take care of them. Uh, Steve, what about you? What is your your feel about that uh, intense opposition to the pre-tribulation rapture of the church? You know, I, I think that if when it comes down to it, if, if, if you believe in the pre-trib rapture, then you have to admit that Israel matters, yeah. that, that the Jews truly yeah. matter. Mm. And, and that's, that's why uh, there, there's such an, an, an antithesis, against, antithesis against that belief mm. within the reform movement, because if yeah. you say that God pulls the church out, then why is he pulling the church out? Is it just to punish everyone else? What do you do about Jacob's trouble then? There has to be a deeper reason, and that deeper reason is the Jews. God yeah. loves the Jews, so he's pulling the church out so he can focus on his people. And, and I think that's why there is, there's, you know, again, Jan, you mentioned a, a, a demonic intensity. Uh, uh, I, I think that is truly where that comes from. Because, yeah. as the, Amir, as you always say, that, uh, you know, those who follow Satan, they, they love or they hate what God loves and they love what God hates. Yeah. And yeah. God loves the Jews, so they hate the Jews and they want to make the Jews... Yeah. Uh, irrelevant. They can't get rid of them. They've tried to get rid of them over and over and over. That doesn't work. You guys are pesky yeah. guys. I mean, mm -hmm. you just keep showing up. <laughs> but yeah. if you if you can't get rid of the Jews, make them irrelevant, and that's the that's the way to do it. Yeah. So that's the say time. Well, um, I think it's time that we move to the Q and A section of our roundtable. So let's go for it. The Q and A section of our round table. So Steve, you're gonna get the questions uh, uh, and uh, throw it at us. Uh, just be careful when you do it, yeah. please. Okay. <laughs> well, um, Amir, I, I, I wanna start with you uh, because I've heard you talk about this. Uh, quite a bit. Um, the first question asks, is the rapture during the Feast of Trumpets? Mm. Do we have it pegged down so that we can know that, that at some year during the Feast of Trumpets, the rapture is going to happen? Because it does talk about a trumpet blowing. I right. remember reading that. Yeah, I remember too. Uh, but uh, if you think the rapture is during the Feast of Trumpet, that means for the other three, uh, 364 days in a year, uh, the rapture can't happen, which is already unbiblical. So I would say that the, the, the trumpets that we are blowing on the Feast of Trumpets are trumpets here on earth, when the, and the trumpets that are being used and heard during the rapture is the heavenly ones welcoming us into heaven. So. Um, I, I think that these are two different uh, uh, people groups that are blowing the trumpets. I, I really believe, Steve, that the festivals that are prescribed in Leviticus 23 either have been fulfilled in Israel through Israel or will be fulfilled in Israel through Israel, but the rapture is not for the nation of Israel, only for those who accepted the Lord from Israel, of course. but. Um, but the rapture is about God is taking his bride, uh, uh, the bride of Jesus, all the way up. And, and it's important that you understand that the, because there is no hour or minute that we should know that it's going to happen, that means it cannot be associated with a prescribed festival. And I truly believe, by the way, that the Feast of Trumpets will have its fulfillment when Yeshua will come back with us 
and, uh, and <clears throat> everybody will see it. And then comes the repentance, which is Yom Kippur, and then comes the Millennial Kingdom, which is uh, the Feast of uh, Tabernacles. So uh, those uh, fall festivals will be fulfilled, but just as the first four were fulfilled in the chronological order within 40, 50 days, if you remember, the latter ones will be fulfilled within 22 days as well. And that means it can only start to be fulfilled when all three are going to be fulfilled uh, immediately. And that's when we come back. So, yes, yes, we're talking about the trumpets, but it's not the same trumpets. I mean, there's many different use for trumpeting and trumpets and yes. different trumpets. This is not the case. And so, again, it can happen on the Feast of Trumpets, maybe, uh, because we don't know the day. I cannot tell you that it can happen any day of the year except of the Feast of Trumpets. I don't know the day. <laughs> but I can also tell yes. you that it can happen in any given day, even the Feast of Trumpets. All right, so the question here is half right. The Feast of Trumpets does matter, but it just doesn't matter for the reason that they think it Correct. matters. I mean, it will be fulfilled so, in the second uh, coming, yes. Uh, Jan, the, uh, the next questioner uh, is, is pretty adamant that the pre-tribulation rapture theory is not biblical because if the first century church had to suffer uh, and die for Jesus, what makes you think the last century church won't have to? Because there's suffering. Look, the church has suffered forever. My goodness, look at the early church. Look at what it went yeah. through. Look at what we go through daily. There's affliction, there's betrayal, there's heartache, there's war that Christians are all a part of. So we never escape that tribulation. There's a difference between tribulation small t and tribulation capital T, time of Jacob's trouble. And again, is the church Jacob? Not Jacob, sorry. So I just think we need to plan on going through troubled times, which we are as we speak. Everyone listening right now, everyone, no exception, is going through something. I'm going through something. You gentlemen are. And we're all believers. But we but again, I'm going back to the term wrath. Barry, thank you for your teaching on it. Amir, thank you for your teaching on it. That is what we escape is God's horrific wrath. We yeah. never see it and we never have. And and I I uh I don't like the question as it is phrased that way because it's not a question. It's 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 actually a statement. Yeah. It starts with pre-tribulation yeah. rapture theory is not biblical. Um, well, we yeah. just gave you all the verses uh, in the previous part of the, uh, and so with all the respect, not only that it's biblical, it's the most biblical theory most because biblical. it fits and it checks all the boxes that yeah. the, the rapture should uh, be. So, uh, uh, you know, yeah, this is it. Um, yeah. Go yeah, ahead. if I can jump in here a little bit, um, you know, I think there's always a lot of confusion concerning, as Jan mentioned, the, the lowercase t tribulation, which means anguish, anxiety, stresses, troubles. And in this mm. life, we are going to have those things. And the early church that suffered at the hands of persecution, that was the persecution of man. During the man. tribulation, it is not the persecution of man. Right. It is the wrath of Almighty God punishing the earth dwellers and finalizing the discipline of the nation of Israel during a time, two thirds of the Jews are going to die. And then finally at that uh, feast of trumpets experience, when Jesus returns with the church, they're going to look upon the one whom they pierced and mourn for him as one mourns for an only son. And, you know, I think one of the important things to remember is in the opening verses of revelation chapter 19, before the second coming, which begins in 11 to 16, the church is already there. Well, if there's no rapture, yeah. then how did the church already get to heaven in order to come back with Jesus? So, hmm. again, I think people get a little murky because one word is used in two different places in two different contexts. Uh, the tribulation that the church went through was not God's wrath. It was the hatefulness of man and uh, the, the persecution that the church endured. Is nothing like what's going to happen during the tribulation under the wrath 
of Almighty God. So there has been no capital T tribulation in this world yet. That's still yeah. that's still yet to come. To come. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. Steve, when we teach the book of Revelation and when we read the description of what the tribulation is, it's nothing compares to anything yeah. the church has gone through or the world has gone through ever since the world was created. So I mean, I mean, I guess even the flood was different than this. It, it, when, and as we teach the tribulation and teach at the different phases of the tri I mean, why would anyone think in his right mind that the church, the bride of Christ, will have to go through all of that right. and, and then be presented to him as a, you know, uh, you yeah. know, as a beautiful, I mean, I always ask people, how do you want to reach heaven? Rare, medium, or well done? Um, and yeah. there you go. Yeah. And, and if I you could know, just and, go and back to the one, wonderful, oh, if I could just go back to the teaching of Ed Heinsen, and he always showed a picture, including at my conferences, of that beaten up bride with the black eye and said, would, and always would say, would mm. God do this to his bride? He would, mm. God would never do that to his bride, gentlemen, never. Mm. Yeah. And and Amir, you mentioned the 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 flood. The flood, it was it was another major trial, but the people who died in the flood, it was just it was over with just in a minute. The rains came and they were gone. When you look at the book of Revelation and you walk through the seals, and then you walk through uh the uh, um Trumpets. Blanking out yeah. on the second one. Thing. And then and then you walk through the bowls, and, and that is just, it's one hit after yeah. another that God wish, has to walk the Jews through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. They, they, they call out for the rocks to fall down on their heads, exactly. but they can't die. So, I, I, yeah, that's a, a very, a, a very different, uh, uh, very different situation. You um Barry we've we've talked about uh or or you mentioned um uh believers receiving their 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 new bodies um and uh uh there's a, a question from a uh from Pete that says when do the old testament saints receive their glorified bodies Will they be present on earth during the millennium? Can you point me to some verses, please? Is is that something? But will the Old Testament saints be raised up at the rapture with everyone else? Or does that come at a, a different time? Yeah, the church uh, is raptured exclusively. Uh, and they put on, as, as Philippians 3.20 says, these lowly bodies uh, will be conformed to the image mm -hmm. of the glorious body of Christ. And I, I like to say that's the destination of predestination we will uh, have that glorious eternally capable body and that is exclusive to the church uh, the old testament saints uh, as daniel 12 talks about uh, many who sleep in the dust of the earth at that time at the second coming they are going to rise and they will put on that glorified body and you know there's a, a second component to that question you know there are going to be people who do not have glor glorified bodies that live into the millennial reign of Christ on earth. And uh, everybody who goes into the millennium is going to be a believer. And uh, there will be death present. We know that a child shall die at 100 years old, and that tells us that there'll be kind of a uh, uh, antediluvian type of atmosphere on the earth, uh, the days of Noah type of longevity, and, and those sorts of things. But the Jews, uh, the Old Testament saints are going to rise at the second coming, and uh, the church is going to put on their, the dead in Christ will rise first and put on their glorified bodies at that point in time. So they are uh, distinct from one another, and the rapture is exclusive again to uh, the church. Church, okay. Um, Amir, the, there's a, another question from, uh, from Deborah, and it, it asks, when does it mention, or where does it mention seven years in the Bible? And I know that that you are preparing to teach for the first time, uh, discovering Daniel, um, and uh, I know you're very excited about about uh, uh, laying all that out. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, can you explain yeah. where the seven years comes from and how that ties yeah. in with, so f- first of with all, the uh, yeah. tribulation? So if, if we look at the Old Testament, the book of Daniel, chapter 9, we speak about the fact that the latter or the last week of the 70 weeks is going to be the one where uh, that, uh, that world leader will start with the peace and then break it in the middle. And then, of course, we know that uh, Israel, uh, I mean, the whole thing will go, you know, very bad to the point that in chapter 12, uh, the prophet describes it as the time that there was no such thing since Israel became a nation. It's that bad. So the, that one last week, a week is a seven years uh, uh, period in Daniel's prophecy. But also when we examine the book of uh, Revelation and we look into the number of days and the number of weeks and the number of months that describe a half of the tribulation, and you see that it fits exactly the uh, the seven years period time that the whole thing is going to last. We actually don't need to work too hard to find out how long the tribulation is going to be. The Bible gives us the number of weeks, the number of days, the number of months, the number of years. It's very easy. So it's super biblical. It's anchored both in the Old and in the New Testament. And it's, um, you know, it's definitely going to happen. And by the way, it's, it's not even a metaphorical um, seven years. Because when we have a description of the number of days, it goes into that detail. And it's important that we, we understand that when, 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 when the Bible doesn't want to, you know, talk about specific length of a period, it will not go to that length to give you so many details about it. Um, right. Here, here, you know, we do have it in the Old, we do have it in New Testament. It's it's probably one of the easiest things to to um, uh, prove from the Bible as far as the length of it. And so, yeah, I, I definitely think that um, this is one of the things everybody agrees on. Now, whether the rapture will take place in the beginning, the middle, or the end, that's a different story, but they all, they all agree that it's going to be a seven years period. And that seven years yeah. period is indeed in the Bible. Can I just, can I raise a question yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe toss it out here? Um, and that would be, I see the attack not just on the rapture, which is bad enough. The attack is on what, what's known as dispensational theology, the left behind theology. Mm-hmm. And I think we should explain, because we have people here sitting in churches, they don't know what theology their church embraces. Uh, I mean, dispensationalism is, you know, a literal antichrist, a literal tribulation, a literal rebirth of Israel, things like that. But many people are in churches that don't attain to this. And even if they do, this theology right now is mocked big time, Um, not just the rapture, but the theology that entails it. And Barry, 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 as a pastor, I think you could address that, too. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's uh, interesting as we watch things unfold to see, you know, what Peter was talking about, that scoffers coming in the last days saying, you know, where's the promise of this coming? And we're living in just such a time. And it was interesting, Amir, I a few weeks ago was teaching at a conference and I had a lady come up to me and say, you know, I'm a I'm a, a Jew and I believe in Yeshua. And how arrogant of you to think that the church is not going to go through the rapture. And, you know, the first thing I saw no, here you was, mean that's because the, the church you mean is the not uh, they're through the tribulation. Yeah. Oh, I said, well, that's because we're not appointed to wrath. Well, how dare you? And, uh, you know, she immediately rejected and called me a couple names as she walked away uh, because she wasn't taught about what we're talking about here, that there are 77s determined for Daniel's people in Holy City. And I think what you said, Amir, we cannot turn this into allegory or metaphor is so important because the first 69 were literal weeks of uh, 360 days each, according to the Jewish calendar. So why would the last one be any different? Two halves, 1,260 days each. So 
Again, yeah. I think this is just has caused such confusion in the church to shy away from the uh, the rebirth of the nation of Israel yeah. being prophetic, uh, being essential and launching forward the narrative of the last yeah. days scenario. And it's just simply ignored yeah. and it has created an ignorance of so many other subjects related to yeah. uh, the latter days. So, you know, the literalist approach, I think, is the only way to yeah. look at uh, the, you know, when the scripture has something allegorical, it identifies it. Yeah. And uh, when it's not, it lets you know that too. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You know, uh, Amir, I, I know that you are constantly barraged with, with uh, uh, comments from your, your uh, videos from people who, who tear you apart for this very reason. They say that, that, uh, um, again, that Israel doesn't matter. They they go after dispensationalism. They they say that uh, it's a it's a short timer theory. Uh, and uh, I mean, how do you respond? Uh, how would you answer Jan's question? Um, well, I mean, first of all, I'm barraged by many things lately. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not only that. That's the least of my problems. <laughs> These um, you don't have to lay next to your car for, at exactly. least. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, look, I, I believe that it, the same force that uh, works um, to uh, negate the, the importance of Israel and to, to confuse people about uh, Israel's uh, plan, the plan of, of God for Israel, I think that's the same exact diabolic force that is uh, basically um, against uh, the rapture in general and the pre-tribulation rapture in particular. Um, look, it's very important that we understand that uh, the fact that Israel will go through the tribulation is for the benefit of Israel to eventually come to faith. And it's not because God hates Israel. I think uh, the Bible says in Hosea, I will go again to my place until they acknowledge their offense. And in their affliction, they will then earnestly seek me. The affliction that the, the people of Israel will have to go through, uh, the fact that they will come to the point where they will understand that religion and tradition is not the answer. And then yes. they will look up to, at the one whom they pierce and they will mourn and cry. Look, if you take away the exclusivity of the salvation of Israel as a nation at the time of the mm. return of the Lord, then you have to throw away parts of the Old Testament, not only the New Testament. And, and so it's important that we understand that God has a heart for Israel. Therefore, yes. they will have to come to the point where they will have to repent. And that repentance will go will be a very tough one. There is no easy repentance, by the way. But the thing is, mm. uh, the thing is, um, we have to remember that God is, as much as God loves Israel, and He does, He will not let any person get away from, uh, you know, with with not believing in the full price that had been paid. And the uh, the sacrificial uh, uh, um, payment of Yeshua on the cross for all of us to be able to now enter into the Holy of Holies and uh, boldly come before the throne of grace. So it's important uh, that we understand that the opposition that we see has a lot to do with denial that Israel will have to go through so much suffering. Yes. And denial, and denial that Israel will have to repent. I mean, those who sanctify Israel as a perfect nation already don't want to see its suffering, and those um, who um, you know who think that uh, Israel is uh, is already forgotten don't understand that even in the Book of Romans, Paul said. If their fall was such riches to the world, how much their acceptance is going to be but life from the dead. There is coming a point, they will be uh, coming to repentance, and all Israel at the time of the second coming will be saved. Amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You know, Jan, a, uh, a, a, a little twist on what you were asking earlier. Yes. Um, 
there are, are, are many believers who don't believe in the rapture. And Jesus said he'll come for those who are awaiting his coming. Does that mean that those who don't believe in the rapture will end up being left behind? You know, uh, and Steve, I get this question probably once a week, and I think I can assure everyone, if you're a blood-bought, born-again believer, you're going to go in the rapture. Some of you will be very surprised, but you will go in the rapture if you're a believer. Pleasantly. Pleasantly surprised, Pleasantly. and it's going to be a boatload of people like that, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, yeah. pre-tribulation rapture believers promise others great surprise. Post-tribulation promise us yes. bad surprises so uh, choose <laughs> what surprise you want to get from who a amen uh, amen comfort one another with those words exactly. yeah. comfort one another with these words yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. yeah. yeah. um exactly. amir a uh a, a question from from uh christy and i'm sorry to everyone in the control room there i didn't get this to you fast enough but uh christy asked do the believers in israel go up in the rapture with the church Absolutely. Look, um, the Bible says that you better hope when, so, right? <laughs> when, the Bible says that when a Jew turns to Christ, the veil is lifted, mm. boom, yeah. and he's automatically saved. And, and, and so this is the point where from being already uh, condemned, he is now not condemned. Um, and now he belongs to that group that is the bride of Christ, and which is, and in that group, there is no Jew, no Gentile, no male, no female. Right. This is where um, ethnicity don't matter anymore. It matters here because eventually there will be more things happening in the world, but here in Christ, that's it. And yes, so any Jewish believer, whether it's in Israel or outside of Israel, whether it's me or Jan, at the moment of repentance and accepting Yeshua as our Lord and Savior, we were guaranteed many things. And one of them is that we will be taken out of here. And in a twinkling of an eye, we'll have our body change and we'll be out. We'll meet the Lord in the air and he will take us to his presence, to mission control room in heaven. And yeah. we're going to have the Bema seat. We're going to have the marriage supper. We're going to come back with him, riding horses behind him. And we're going to reign and rule and judge with him for a thousand years before we enter into the uh, final and eternal stop in the new Jerusalem. So, yes, um, it, once you uh, become a believer, it doesn't matter where you're a Jew or not, you're all going to be taken. I uh, uh, see we're getting near time. I want to yeah. uh, ask one more question that uh, uh, I will throw out to uh, uh, any of you who want to jump on it. Um, Joy asks, if the tribulation is for the Jews, what happens to the Gentile unbelievers? Is there any hope for them at all uh, in the tribulation? Or are they just there to experience the anguish and then to be judged? Yeah, there Anyone? is a numberless multitude from every tribe, tongue, nation, and exactly. people uh, who are delivered uh, by the blood of Jesus, even though they face death, and many of them will be beheaded uh, for refusing the mark. But the Lord is going to keep saving during the tribulation. As a matter of fact, right. I think because of the descriptive phrases that are used there, it's probably going to be the greatest great awakening in the history Amen. of the world. Uh, people from all over the world, including those who maybe were, uh, you know, attend church attendees and uh, never made a commitment to yeah. Christ, are going to realize, hey, this whole thing that they were telling us is real. And uh, when they see this guy rise up from the geographic area of the former Roman Empire and and see that he tells everybody you have to take a mark or you can't buy and sell, uh, the gospel message is going to have a legitimacy that it didn't before. So absolutely, God is going to be saving people uh, during the tribulation period. And that's I think that's one of the reasons that we we have to recognize that, you know, God's not counting heads. He's watching the clock because he's going to keep right on saving. He's going to save during the tribulation. He's going to save souls during the millennium as well. 
uh, because there are going to be people born with a sin nature who have to make a decision uh, for him. So there's a day and an hour that is predetermined uh, by the Lord that uh, we're going to be out of here. The tribulation will begin, but the Lord is going to keep saving throughout mm -hmm. the whole of that as well. Thank you. It's excellent. Yeah. And remember, yeah. he's hope, actually hope going, to use, end. Is going to use Jews to save the Gentiles. 144,000 yes. yes. from 12 tribes. I mean, come on. Uh, they're not only... So I think it's going to be beautiful. But, it, but again, you don't want to wait until the tribulation right. to you make up that. your mind. Yeah. Because yeah. you read, I mean, read the Bible to see what's going to happen to this world. And only if you hear the gospel for the first time during that time, then you want to get saved. But if, if you hear it now, obey now, accept now, be saved now, because it's not going to get pretty. Not at all. Amen. Steve, thank you. Uh, Jan, tell us about your book. It's coming out next month. Uh, yes. Um Harvest House has published a compilation of some of the best messages given at my conference here in suburban Minneapolis. Barry, you're in the book. Amir, you've written a lovely foreword, and I thank you. Jack Hibbs, Ed Heinsohn, yeah. every, Mark Hitchcock, just lots of people, writer, uh, contributors that your audience loves are in the book. Free order on Amazon. It'll be available everywhere in a month when Jesus yeah. returns. Thank you. That's yeah. So we see the Im image of the book right there uh, when Jesus returns. So uh, you can go and pre-order it. Um, and Barry, any last-minute thing you want to say before you will uh, close it a prayer? Well, I think what we mentioned earlier for the audience. Uh, you know, I think Dr. Ed Heinsohn penned a wonderful phrase we've all repeated. Prophecy is not yes. meant to scare you, but to prepare you. And we need to be prepared for the times in which we live. And one of the most important things, I think, for us to recognize, Amir, is that with the lateness of the hour that seems obvious, we're living around people who are going to go into the tribulation. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we need to be telling them what's coming yes. because they may not be super receptive mm -hmm. now, but... When things start popping that we right. told them are going to happen, yeah. and they'll give consideration to the yeah. gospel message as well. So Amen. I think let's let's be about the Father's business yeah. and occupy Amen. until He comes, telling people about the Lord. Thank you. Steve, thank you for being here with us today. And you and yes. I are working also tirelessly to write uh, even on these topics, but from you know a different perspective of uh, also uh, some... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, fiction thrillers uh, just to, to reach more audiences as well. Yes. Um, th so thank you for filling in for Mike Olay, who, uh, sure. who will be here next time. And Pastor Barry, if you do us the honor to end uh, with a prayer, and we will then conclude. Father, we are so grateful for your word. We thank you that we serve a God who knows the end from the beginning, and you've given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. And we thank you, Lord, that your uh, Psalms tell us you've esteemed your word, even above all your name. And I pray we would do the same, Lord, to look to your word and all that it has told us that is coming and how we are to live as we await that glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray for any uh, who've been watching who aren't ready, that they would get ready mm. by faith in Christ and recognize that there is but one Messiah. And he came through the nation of Israel, and he died for the sins of the whole world, that we might live forever. And so we thank you for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen, uh, folks. Thank you. Uh, tomorrow, at the same time, I'll be giving a spe special Q&A on Israel at war. I'll answer questions about the war. Uh, not about Bible prophecy, not about other biblical aspects. People, this is more of a news thing, and you can ask me questions about the war, and I'll gladly answer. Until then, I want to thank you for being with us. Thank God for no rocket, uh, incoming rockets alarm so Amen. far. Thank you. God bless you. And shalom from Galilee, from Israel, and from wherever you guys are in the United States. Thank you. God bless you. Please share this video with as many as you can. We love you. Thank you and Shalom.